the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. All right, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rahakwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Holy Tongue. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the King and Savior of Israel. And Rahakwadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for leading by example in these last days. And Shalom to the hopeful elect. All you Aki and making your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, through the Spirit, the name of this lesson is History is Written by the Victors. And I'm going to go into this quote that is normally attributed to Winston Churchill. But when I was looking for the, the original author, I came across this article and it says, uh, it says the history of quote unquote history is written by the victors. It says many attribute this adage to Winston Churchill, but it turns out he was just rewriting some losers. And I'm not going to read the whole article because it's it's really pretty boring. But the point is, there's this quote that history is written by the victors, which goes into how when a group of people conquer another group of people, the history of what took place is written by whoever wins the war. Whoever's in power ultimately writes their own perspective of history. So when you look at American uh, public schools, for example, we're indoctrinated with a bunch of lies because we've been conquered as a people. These Edomites have written their own interpretation of historical events. This is why they tell you that civilization began with the Greeks which is complete madness. You had the Assyrian Empire, you had the Persian Empire, you had the Babylonian Empire, the Egyptian Empire. There were numerous empires and civilizations that existed before self-proclaimed white people came into power. But since they're the victors, they've rewritten history to say that they were the first. Even though everything the Greeks did was plagiarized from the Egyptians, which was all pagan madness, and a lot of it they got from Sumerians and Babylonians. So the point is, when a group of people come into power, they write themselves as being the top the most wise, the most brave, having the best culture, this and that. But ultimately, the true history of the earth has been documented by the prophets of the Heavenly Father. And those are the men that are going to rule in the kingdom of heaven. So this quote, history is written by the victors, is actually extremely true. The people that are going to rule in an everlasting kingdom are the men that have written down the history in the scriptures. And we're going to get this real quick. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to Yahweh, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. The most important thing to understand is that the Heavenly Father, the creator of heaven and earth, has given the victory to his chosen elect, and he's given those souls over to Yahweh Shai Mashiach, his only begotten son. Now, when you go to Esau's history, they call it secular history. The word secular means of the world. Secular history teaches you that the greatest conquerors are who? Uh, Alexander the Greek, Napoleon. George Washington, all of these degenerate Edomites. But the truth is, they're all going to be slaves in the kingdom of heaven. They're all heathen and they're going to be put down. The truth is that the authors of the Bible, the men of the Lord, even the authors of books that we don't have access to right now, the company of prophets, they are the true leaders and the true rulers and the true conquerors of the earth. And they're going to rule in an everlasting kingdom. So history was written by the victors. When you go into, let me get this real quick. This is... Uh, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 28, verse 8. And this is a precept we bring out all the time. It shows you the mission statement of the prophets. It says, The prophets that have been here before and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. And when you look into the history of the prophets, our forefathers were brutally put to death in various captivities. And we were we were seen as enemies of our own people because we warned our nation to not follow the ways of the heathen. But the majority of our people being reprobate, they sought favor and succor and help and financial assistance and ease from the heathen. Their mentality was, look, history is written by the victors. These people are victorious. They've conquered Israel. So as long as we follow them, things will be a little bit easier. But not knowing that the prophets that were prophesying against these countries and against these great kingdoms, those are the true victors. Those are the men that are going to have the last laugh. 
Those are the men that are going to rule in an everlasting kingdom, which will never be destroyed. See, right now, when you look at the ancient Egyptian empire, what happened to it? It was completely destroyed. All of that wealth that the pharaohs were able to amass and bury themselves with, it was all to no avail. It was vanity. Why? Because whoever comes in power next, they're just going to rob your grave. They're just going to break into your tomb and steal all the gold. So what was the point of being the victor? It's a temporary... Matter of fact, let me get this in uh, Ecclesiastes. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, and I'm going to start at verse 10. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. Right, when you read the book of Ecclesiastes, it's Yahawashai who at that time was King Solomon. He was lamenting that all of his works were in vanity ultimately because his kingdom was going to be destroyed. That was a temporary kingdom at that time and he understood that. He understood that all the gold, all the silver, all the wealth, all the heathens that he had in subjection, all the slaves, the concubines, all of his wealth would eventually be destroyed and or translated to another kingdom. He understood that his rulership was temporal. These heathen actually come into power and think they're going to stay in power forever, which is vanity. But he understood, look, there's going to be an everlasting kingdom, and that kingdom is going to be ruled by who? The 144,000, a nation of kings and priests, the Israelite men that follow Yahawashai. And, you know, I open with Revelation 21 and 5, and it says the exact same thing as 2nd Ezra 15. The Heavenly Father told Ezra to write these things in a book, to write them in paper, for they are faithful and true. And what do the prophecies tell you? The prophecies tell you that there's going to be four beasts, and after the fourth beast is destroyed, the kingdom of heaven is going to be ushered in through a great deliverance of the nation of Israel, and that kingdom is going to be everlasting. This is the history that's written by the victors, the history of the earth, the history of all these heathen kingdoms, and the history of the nation of Israel, our fall and our rise after the redemption that's been written and documented by the prophets. It tells you in the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter in the 70th verse, that the Most High spake by his holy prophets, which have been since when? Since the world began. The prophets have been here since the garden. They've been preaching Yahawashai's everlasting kingdom from the beginning. Those are the men that have written history, and those are the men that are going to receive the victory. So let's get this real quick. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 37. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Now, this is Apostle Paul writing to the church. He's writing to the Israelites in Rome that believe in Yahawashah's resurrection, which today represents all of us. If you're an Israelite, if you're someone of so-called Negro and Native Indian descent, or one of our descendants that happen to look like the other nations, if you're an Israelite, if your seed goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and... And the key part being you believe in Yahawashai, this scripture is talking about you. This says Romans 8 and 37, nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And when you go to the Greek, this word more than conquerors is Strong's G 5245, which is hypernikeo. Now, hypernikeo is a compound word. You have the Greek word hyper, which means beyond or super or extra. When you add hyper in front of a word, it means basically more than or super. And then you have the word nikeo. Nikeo is the verb of Nike, which Nike is a noun that means victory. There was a Greek god named Nike also. This is where the shoe company gets his name from. So you have hyper and nikeo, meaning we're beyond victorious. We're beyond conquerors. We're more than conquerors. We're super conquerors. Why? Because of Yahawashah Mashiach. This is verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Yahweh, which is in Mashiach Yahawashai, our Lord. So because the Most High loves us and he loves Yahawashai and he's given us a kingdom, we're more than conquerors. We're beyond conquerors. We 
history is written by the victors. Now we're going to get the victory and through the spirit, like I say all the time, we already have the victory if we're of the elect. It's about enduring. That's why Yahweh Shai constantly says, hold fast to what you have. Hold on to what you already have because if we're of the elect, we were given the victory from the foundation of the earth. Before the water ever formed, before hydrogen and oxygen ever came together, the elect already had the victory. And they came back on earth through various uh, reincarnations over a dispensation of time and wrote down history. The history has been written by the victors. This is Revelation 2 and 25. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. And that word fast means to hold tight. Hold on tight to what you have already, which is the victory. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. So this same book where Yahawashai is constantly, repeatedly telling the Apostle John to write down what he sees. These things you see, write them down. These things I tell you, write them down. He constantly tells the Apostle John to write down everything. And what did Apostle John write? He wrote down how the kingdom of heaven is gonna be ushered in. He wrote down how Jerusalem is gonna fall, this devil is gonna come back into power, but ultimately, Yahawashai is gonna come back to deliver the elect. He wrote down the 144,000. He wrote down the kingdom of heaven. He wrote down history. Now, some of the history happened already. Some of it has yet to transpire because you're dealing with prophecy. You're dealing with a book that was written before the foundation of the earth. So all of the prophets, when you go back to Daniel, let me get this real quick. This is Daniel chapter 12, verse 13. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. So the Most High is telling the prophet Daniel that he would be back in the end of days and he would stand in his lot. What does that mean? When you go into the book of Daniel, the prophet Daniel actually wrote down the history of the Babylonian Empire and the transfer of power over into the Medio Persian Empire. And then there was a transfer between the Medio Persian Empire and the Greek Empire, and from the Greek Empire to the Roman Empire. So the prophet Daniel wrote down history. And he's a victor. Why do we know that? Because we just read the Most High told him to stand in his lot at the end of days. What happens at the end of days? All of the prophets of the Bible and the men that believe on Yahawashai, they're going to get the victory. So history is written by the victors. Let me get this. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 11. Yahweh gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. In other words, history is written by the victors, the army, that great army that you read about in Ezekiel 37. Those are the men that published the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which contains the history of the world and also the future, the prophecies, man. It's all about the spirit of prophecy, which is uh, what Revelation 19 and 10, the testimony of Yahweh Shai. All the men that believe on Yahweh Shai, those are the victors, man. That's, that's plain. So let me end on this. This is the book of Revelation chapter 15. Verse 2, and keep in mind, this is one of the visions that Yahawashai commanded Apostle John to write down repeatedly. It says, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory, them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of the Most High. So let's unpack this. You have a sea of glass mingled with fire. This is talking about the nuclear destruction of Babylon the Great and them that had gotten the victory. Who is that? That's talking about the elect that are in the chariots. They've been delivered from this great destruction and they're looking down and they're seeing a lake of fire mixed with glass. They're seeing the destruction through the chariots because they got delivered from the destruction. It says them that had gotten the victory over the beast which is the Roman Empire, democracy, the way of Esau Edom, the self-proclaimed white man, his whole setup, his imagination. That's the image of the beast. The mark of the beast is the RFID microchip. It's also known as the NFC microchip in different parts of the world. But basically, any prophet that's breaking down the scriptures, you have to know what is the beast, what is the image of the beast, and what is the mark of the beast. It's three different things, okay? The image of the beast is not talking about a picture of white Jesus. That's not what that's talking about. But the point is, those that have gotten the victory in Yahawashai Mashiach, those are the same men that wrote down the visions for thousands of years. Those are the same men that are back here standing in their lot 
in the end of days. And those are the same men that are going to govern in the kingdom of heaven. As it tells you in Isaiah 32, when Yahweh Shah rules in righteousness, the princes are going to rule in judgment. And it's going to be a beautiful thing. Those same men that are going to rule in judgment are the same men that have been writing down history this whole time in every captivity. So Abarat Zadis was edifying. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rahakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect, the victors. Shalom.